Both Microsoft and Google have free form software, although Google's was released a long time before Microsoft's, but both of them are slightly different. So my main picks for how they differ is I like Google for its searchable dropdowns, the ability to co-author even with the free version. You can have people fill it out with the free version, but you can't get multiple people editing it through different accounts. And also the responder can edit or auto save as they respond. Whereas Microsoft Forms is better for branching, better for uh, question types, including the ranking question type that I liked. And you also have a lot more flexibility with theming and formatting. My name is David Benayim and I have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, I'm covering on my channel and I love talking about different stuff like this as well. So let's get going. What I'm currently showing you is the view of the responder. I'll show you how to author them in a little bit, but let's compare the question types. Now I have the question type and then underneath in the description, sometimes I have what they do differently, but I'll call them out where they're relevant. So you do have a list where typically you would have just words, but you can add images. In Microsoft in particular, they just added that, but Google's had it for a while. If you do have a lot of things, you probably wanna go for a dropdown uh, available in both of them, although you access it in a slightly different way. But what I'll say is Google is much, much stronger for this because you can just sort of start typing. Like here I can say uh, H-E, and then it will jump to HE in that list. But here, if I start typing, then nothing will happen. Um, next up, we have a text box, and these can happen in both. And then you have a date one. So here, Microsoft is better because Google has to force you to write this way, write it out like that. And obviously, that's not typically how we would typically do things. If we want dates, we want a date picker. And that's only in Microsoft, which is ironic because Google allows a date picker in Google Sheets, whereas Excel does not. Um, next, we have a rating, and Microsoft, again, does a little bit more here that you can have different images like this, stars or light bulbs or things. Google's, you can only have one, two, three, four, five like that, but you can have more numbers in both of them. Uh, next up, we have Likert or a grid, and I really find this confusing the way Microsoft analyzes it. I much prefer the way Google does it. Uh, file upload, this is something that I find um, with Microsoft you do need to be inside the organization. Everyone who answers this questionnaire needs to be inside this organization or this entire form is not valid, which I find really, really restrictive. Whereas Google, you just need to have someone signed in and then you can have it work. So for example, here, if I were to go to collect responses, I cannot click anyone can respond because I have a file upload. So that is quite restrictive for me. And especially since you can do this with Microsoft from the free form software, like you can with Google, but with free, you cannot have an upload file type. Go to next in both of them, because you can have sections in both of them. And here is where I have different question types that are in one, but not the, the other one. So let's look first at Google Forms. So in Google Forms, you can have the same sort of grid, but you can have multi-select, which in Microsoft, you can't at the time of making this video, which I think is very, very restrictive. Um, you also have a time option with Google. So I can type a time or a duration. It can also be a duration. And then you have branching. I find that Microsoft works a lot better. As you can see with Microsoft, if I say yes, it will show me this is question nine and this is question 10. Whereas if I say no, it will show me this is question nine because essentially it skips the other one. Whereas with Google, you have to include a new section. So this will take you to another section. So you have to create a lot of sections if you have a lot of branching. So if I choose next, that will take me to the relevant section. Whereas if I choose no, it will take me to the end of the form. To author branching, here I am in the questions. What I can do is I can click on the three dots for something and I can say, go to section based on answer. This is in Google, but in Microsoft, I can click on these three dots and say, add branching. And then we'll open it up in a new screen that I press back for. But in each one, I can choose next, end of form, and then I can go to any specific question or a section. So you have much more flexibility. Back to the responder's point of view, two question types that are only in Microsoft. One is NPS, Net Promoter Score, which is kind of like a rating, but it sort of analyzes it differently. One to six is essentially a negative, seven and eight is a neutral, and then nine and 10 is a promoter. What I do really like is the ranking one where you can drag and drop and say which one you like best and order them, or you can use these arrows. I think this is really, really strong and this is only in Microsoft Forms. So I'm going to submit both of them and let's see how the answers look. 
So I'm going to go to this tab in both and you have questions, responses. It looks very, very similar. In terms of which visuals to use, that is a little bit different. So Google will do a pie chart when it is a single select or when it is a multi-select checkbox, it will do it in a bar chart. Uh, kind of a bit pointless here, as you can see, because here you have like the uh, the names. Obviously, all of these are going to be equal and it's 10% because there have been 10 responses. Makes sense. I guess it could be that there are two people with the same name, but it's uh, kind of obscure. But if I show you, if I go to questions and I change this to be a checkboxes, and then I go here to responses, it will now show me in this bar chart. So it depends on the question type. Whereas in Microsoft Forms, it doesn't depend on the question type because whether it's multi-select or single select, it will show you this way. What it does depend on is how many options you have. But yeah, if I've added six options, more than five, it will show it to me like this in a bar chart. Uh, whereas if I even remove the sixth one, then this will now show me a pie chart. Now that shows me a pie chart. And here I have to scroll the really, really, really long list. Um, ironically, the scrolling is different because in Google, it just has the answers and this I can scroll. Uh, it's probably better, whereas in Microsoft, I have to scroll that. There you go. I do have some names with three or with two uh, in the Microsoft ones. And if I go to questions though, then when you have the drop down, Google does make you scroll, whereas Microsoft doesn't make you scroll. Now it is different in how you make them insert new choice uh, here I have choice and I can change it to a drop down through this way and I can choose multiple answers like this so these three all fall under the choice one whereas with Google's questions if I add in a new question like this I can choose multiple choice checkboxes and drop downs are three different question types also note that short answer and paragraph are different question types for text whereas in Microsoft, you just have one that is called text and that you can change to long answer. It kind of makes more sense, I think, that you can do that. And note as well that if you do text here, you can add in the three dots some restrictions, but only those restrictions are numbers. These are related to numbers. Whereas with Google, you do get more flexibility. So if I change this to a, a text, whether it's short or long, I can choose response validation, and that can be a number, it can be text, which contains or doesn't contain, must be an email, must be a URL, or it must be a length that is a maximum minimum character count, or it could even be a, an expression if you want to go much, much more sophisticated with that. So going to text responses, they are different. Google will just list them out like this, whereas Microsoft will show you this and will show you a word cloud if you have 10 or more responses. Uh, personally, I don't think the word cloud is that useful, but you can go to more details and see them in Microsoft anyway, sort of like this to get to the same kind of thing. The word cloud could be a nice thing. Uh, we have dates as well. So dates of departure, they are going to list them out in Google and actually rank them and give you the numbers. But in Microsoft, it just gives you all of them and you can go to more details and it doesn't group together when you've had multiple of the same one, which I find not ideal. Um, although date questions are not usually that common. Uh, then we had right to your last trip. So Microsoft will give you an average, which I think is super, super useful, whereas Google will not. Uh, I find the average to be one of the most important ones. Microsoft, if you have enough, it will also give you insights. So this is trying to, to use AI to say when they responded to something else, how did they do it? Um, kind of nice. I don't think I've learned anything from these insights ever, but they are there. Uh, and then you have the sort of checkboxes. And I find that Google does it much better because it will do this clustered column chart. So you can compare all of them and see the, the thing. Microsoft will do a stacked bar chart, which and have 100, 0, and 100%. I guess this makes sense when it's really a true Likert scale, when you have, you know, would not recommend, might recommend, would recommend, and they are kind of incremental. But usually you, can, you would use this for something that is just a grid, and it doesn't make sense at all to have the analysis like this. But you can, of course, export this, and I'm going to show you the exporting options in a little bit as well. Um, uploading a file, this is kind of similar for both. Um, in Microsoft, it would do it on OneDrive or SharePoint, depending where you started the form, whereas in Google, it would do it just in a Google Drive folder. 
and you can see more details and see a similar thing to that in view and folder as well. Uh, questions only in Google section. Uh, here it, it is the multi-select checkboxes, gives you responses like the single select one, as you might expect. And the time one, you can't do time inside Microsoft and it would give you a similar answer here and it would group them sort of by category as well, which I quite like. And then you have branching. So, well, this one was the same. It's a pie chart in both. And then you have, uh, this is then your rating scale. Note it doesn't give you an average in Google, which is kind of not that useful. In Microsoft, here you have MPS, where you have Net Promoter Score. It's a registered trademark thing. I don't find it yet that useful because, yeah, it has passive detractors, promoters. Uh, whereas here you have ranking, and I really, really like what they do with ranking. It puts them for you inside a neat chart, uh, and it, it also puts it in a very granular way if you go for more details like this. So to create a Google form, all you need is a free Gmail account, and you can get to it that way. For a Microsoft one, you need an Outlook.com or a Hotmail.com, and you can get through it that way. Big, big difference if you're using the personal version with Microsoft. If you go to the form, you can click here, and there is no option for collaborate. You cannot have someone co-editing your form. They can complete the form, and they can see a summary of the results that you can get to by clicking here, share a summary link. But in Google, you have the option to collaborate. Now, with Microsoft Forms, you can collaborate if you are doing it with an education or a business account. This is how it would look. So over here, I can click the three dots and collaborate or duplicate, and then I can get a link to collaborate. And this is something that I do all the time. So if you are looking to collaborate, then you need Google or a Microsoft business education account. Back to the home page. I like with Microsoft, the, it shows you how many responses there have been. In Google, it doesn't do that. You also have the option to either create a group form or an individual form. Now, they are kind of slightly different. Here is a group form and open in Excel looks like this. Whereas if I have in Microsoft, if I have a normal form, I have open in Excel looks like this, different icon. And this means it downloads it versus this one. That means it takes you to the Excel spreadsheet that's linked to it. With Google, I love that you have the choice. You can do both. and you can view in sheets. If you haven't created one yet, you would create sheets there, but you can also click the three dots and choose download responses and it will download as a CSV file. You also have summary question individual. Honestly, I've never used question. That's not available in Microsoft. So I don't think that's important. I like that Microsoft gives you the average time to complete. And if you go to view results versus individual, it will show you how many time, how much time for each person as well. Because Excel has Power Query in it, that Google does not Google Sheets at this time. Excel gives you a lot more flexibility. Um, for example, you can use filters by separating things out if they are multi-select. I have a whole other video on that that I'll link to this. Comparing settings, if you want to get email notifications for new responses, you can switch that on. In Microsoft, you would go to settings here. In Google, you have settings here. So in Microsoft, if I scroll down, I can see here, allow them to get a response and get email notifications. In Google, to allow them to get a response, you have to switch on collect email addresses, and here you have to put always. And in Google, you can say allow response editing. You can't do that in Microsoft. That is a really, really good one. So for example, after they've completed it, they can say edit your response. Most of these options are similar. I'm not going to go through them, but you can in both of them edit, for example, the confirmation message here or here, and then you can view the results summary as well. Disable autosave. Autosave is another feature that is only in Google, but not in Microsoft. So if someone exits the form accidentally, they can go back to it and all of the stuff so far has been saved. Uh, Microsoft does, on the other hand, have like, you can have a start date, end date, and set time duration that's allowed. I don't think this is that useful in Google. You can just say accepting responses, yes or no. And I have anyone can respond is grayed out if I have a file upload in Microsoft Forms. That's annoying. In Google, you just need someone to be able to sign in and then they can do that. But in Microsoft, you have to have them inside your organization. Otherwise, file upload will not work. Granted, most forms, you don't need a file upload, so it's fine. But yeah, it is something that is limiting. You also have here in Microsoft the option to do multilingual. So you can manually translate it. It doesn't do it for you automatically, annoyingly. And the styles are more elaborate in Microsoft for sure. In Google, you just have this. You can change some fonts and some colors and maybe choose an, a header image. 
But in Microsoft, you have all of these styles that are preset. You can change this. You can also have background music on. That way, when the person is answering, he will get background music as he is completing that form. In Microsoft, right at the beginning, you have to choose between new form and new quiz and also new group form or new form. But in Google, you get flexibility and you can change it later on. A quiz, by the way, is a place where you can have the questions, but you can allocate correct answers and points for each one that's correct. In Google, also, you can make this a quiz and you get a couple more options that you don't get in Microsoft. And you can also get keyboard shortcuts that you don't have in Microsoft through here, keyboard shortcuts. So talking about sharing, in Google, you have the option to actually get a pre-filled link. So if you have like a template, someone is probably always going to say dining, uh, that could be the default that people can then change. In Microsoft, you don't have the ability to do that. I don't think it's all that useful though, but there are different ways that you can collect responses in Microsoft. For example, you can get it to create a QR code. In Google, you'd need to use third-party software to do that, although it's not too difficult to do it. And then you can also get the ability to have a cover page in Microsoft, which is also a brand new feature. And also, if you do it through a distribution channel, so for example, I do it through Teams and I do it through Excel Consulting, and now I've chosen the Excel Consulting team, I will then be able to elicit a list of who hasn't yet responded. So I can edit the text here. Not incredibly obvious that you can edit the text, but you can here if you want to. So if I exit out of the Microsoft and the Google one, then in settings here, I can now go to this one. That's the Get Smart Notifications. That can be activated if you're doing it through a channel and only people within that channel have responded so far. If you go to responses in Google, you get the opportunity to copy each chart and that will do it as an image. In Microsoft, you'd have to screenshot it, but Windows Shift S is able to take a screenshot and then you can paste it wherever you want. So not much of a difference there really. On the home page, if I go to both of them, then you have templates here that you can expand if you want to by view all like that. And then you get more templates. But in Microsoft, you do have an additional thing, which is quick imports. And then you can actually upload a Word document or a PDF with a form, but only the questions, not the responses. And then it will auto analyze them. That would be nice, but it would take a lot more work. <laughs> so a bit about creating questions. So if you go here, you can create questions by just clicking the plus button in Google or in Microsoft, it's also pretty straightforward. You can just click somewhere like that and then you'll see insert new. This will allow you to kind of get some recommended settings and you can just kind of multi-select and add them using AI to try and suggest what you want to do. But if you want to create a new one like that, you would do it there. The difference is, and I think this is a really, really big one, in Microsoft, once you've created a question, you can't change the question type. In Google, you can go back and change the question type after you've created the question, which is actually really, really useful. Uh, you can also import questions. So if you have some questions from another form that you really like, you can select that and select here, and then it will show you the ones that you can import and you can take on the ones that you want. Microsoft, you can't do that. Now, both of them will allow you to insert, for example, a choice and paste some options if you've copied them from a spreadsheet. That is a really, really good speed up trick that they both allow you to do. In Google, just to show you, I can paste over here and it will also work. So Google has add a question, import, and then text, image, video, and section. And so if I wanna add some text, I can add that in the middle of the form. In Microsoft, you just have insert new, and these are all question types, except for section, which is the same as that. But if you just want to have just a heading or subheading, you can just add in a question and then not have it be required. And that is it as well. Uh, in both of them, you can set things as required and you can also have required for all in the settings as well. Um, so that's pretty good. Microsoft does number them, which Google doesn't automatically, which I really like. It numbers them. It makes it much nicer user experience. Google's options for formatting text are a little bit limited. You have bold italic underlines link, and that's just remove formatting. Whereas Microsoft, you have uh, color changes as well. You have bullet points, numbered lists, change casing, font size. So there is a little bit more options there, which I find quite useful. So that's it that I wanted to show you, but if you did find this to be a lot to remember, then I do have a list with all of these things. If it's in Google, if it's in Microsoft, some details sometimes who's the winner and the importance that I give it. Now, if you want to find this file, then on my Excel consulting website, I have a list link in the description below of all of the files that are linked to the videos that I make. My name is David Benheim and I have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams, and some other applications like the ones we've covered in this video. I release weekly videos, so subscribe if you enjoy this kind of information.